What risk would you take to make a discovery of a lifetime? This has been a question that I had hundreds of times. For I'm one of those guys that loves to discover things. I love to uncover something that no human has ever seen, never touched before. And I thought to myself, how do I increase my yield? I had this uh, passion of like, you know, really, really pushing myself. And how can I go into areas that no one has ever been before? So I learned about scuba about 13 years ago. And I thought, hey, you know what? If I were able to go underwater, if I were able to go in areas and regions of the world that no one has been before, I could possibly increase my odd or yield for fossil discovery because I'm really passionate about fossils. Unfortunately, you know, scuba, most people think about scuba as like this tropical vacation. You have all these amazing fish and coral reefs. But the areas that I was interested in, they were completely black. They were swamps. They were river systems that were cutting through ancient formations and exposing all these amazing fossil beds but you had to go into these places. And it wasn't a tropical place. It was very, very different, very dark. This is, this is my tropical vacation. You know, here's a picture <laughs> of me in an area in Virginia where I could increase my odds for discovery. And there's huge risk involved with being in these places. There was a time when I was diving down in one of these river systems, and I'm probing along the bottom, you know, and, and, and it's, it's, it's a little different because um, it's not really like scuba like you would think of, where you, you know, you're just floating on a reef. It's, you kind of sink yourself down to the bottom with a ton of weight, and you're take, you have a screwdriver, and you're pulling yourself on the bottom of the river, and you're navigating, and your world is six inches in front of you. Even with the most intense light, in some cases, it's complete blackness. It's total dark. And you're moving along, and you're probing along. And there was a case where um, I'm moving in this river system, and you know I'm navigating, and I'm finding a couple of things. And you know what? It wasn't really productive. And I decided, you know, I need to get out of here. So I. Uh, I started to rise, and lo and behold, I came upon a ceiling. So I don't know if any of you dive, or if you ever dove and did really uh, technical diving, you go into cave systems. Imagine if you're in black water and you hit a ceiling. That means like you're hitting this roof, and you don't know where you're at. So what do you do in this predicament? And I thought to myself, you know, I. I, you know, I could panic, I could, uh, I didn't really know what to do. I was thinking, it was like, oh my gosh, you know, WTF, I'm in a place that I've never been before, and how do I react in this situation? So I got my bearings straight, I inflated my BCD, I was pasted to this ceiling, and I just thought to myself, okay, how do I get out of here? I took my light, I shined to the ceiling, and I could just barely see the particulates of the river that was pushing the current. And I decided, it's like, hey, when I went to the water, I knew which direction the river was going. And if I went to my right, maybe I could find my way out. So a few minutes later, fortunately, I found my way out. I never dove in that area again. Um, <laughs> but uh, there's, other, there's other risks that you take in these situations. And, close to the same spot in this river system, there's bull sharks that come up through the river and they, they navigate the, the tidal waters of the eastern shoreline. And I move, again, I'm moving along, I have my screwdriver, I'm diving in, you know, I'm moving along and I'm, I'm just looking, trying to search and probe things. This thing comes up and slams into the side of me. And my knee-jerk reaction was like, Again, WTF, you know, I turn my light, and all I see is this silver body. And I knew it was a bull shark, because bull sharks are known to go in these rivers. 
I could have went to the surface. Um, you know, I, I decided, you know, if, if I did, you know, what would happen? What would, how would the shark react to me? So I just huddled, you know, sat there for a little bit, about five minutes. I meandered on and went on among my business. And lo and behold, not long after, I found a really incredible find was, that was published. And this is, these are bones from an ancient whale, and these are some of the oldest remains of whales in the Western Hemisphere. So that was my drive. It was like, that was what put me in that position. It's like, wow, I could bring this back. I could show the world this, this new find, this, this answer, this missing link in science. And that would drive me to the next spot and to keep pushing myself. I'm, a, I'm, not, a, I'm not afraid of snakes. Um, a lot of folks are. But there's something about when you're diving in black water and you bump into a snake that is as round as your forearm. And I mean literally bumping into it. And you're down there, 30 feet down. And I'm sure the snake is saying, why are you here? And I'm thinking, okay, I, I get that because why are you here? And uh, there was cases where I would run into these guys as well. Again, you can't freak out. You're in the darkness. You're, uh, you have to get your bearings straight. And not far from this site, finding some another, other, other amazing uh, fossil discoveries. One of which is a walrus tusk. It's about five to six million years, as well as this megalodon tooth, which is big as my hand. Your heart is throbbing. You're like, oh my gosh. You're the first one to see and touch this. And you bring it to the surface, and then you show people, and they're like, oh my goodness, that is absolutely amazing. Something like this existed. And it's just laying there in these river systems, in these swamps. So what is it like down there? So I'm telling you about this in this talk, and I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get you to imagine what it's like to be in a condition like this. And it's really, it's really surreal until you're really there. You know, you're, you can talk about it, but if you, even if you just close your eyes and you try to feel your way around, it's nothing like this condition. You have trees, you have current, you have fishing line, you have glass. You have caverns, you have wicked animals that you don't expect to be there or not thinking about. Your world is right here. And then occasionally you get smacked in the face by some kind of foreign debris that's just coming down through the river system. And some, you know, seaweed just wrapping around you. It's just this weird feeling, so you kind of freak out. But how do we, can we capture this to share this with everyone else? So I. I reached out to this guy, Robert Cantrell, and I told him, I said, what I'm doing down there is absolutely incredible. How do we share this with the world? And uh, so the only way we can is kind of film it. And if you think I'm nuts and crazy to go into situations, I mean, here's a guy that's carrying a camera, and he has no control of anything, and he's trying to film what I'm seeing. So he's in a worse shape than I am. <laughs> and uh, so the first time I went down with Robert, uh, within 30 seconds he lost me, he pops up and he goes, I don't even know where you were. And I said, yeah, because we're in black water and you can't see me. So we have to tie off to each other and you, you have to almost tag along. So as a cinematographer, he has to hold the camera out in front. He can't see me and he just has to guess where I'm at. So luckily we were able to film some of these activities. And what you're looking at here uh, is a film of myself. I'm down and I'm great brushing this whale skull that I literally bumped into. I didn't see it. I hit my head against it and boom, there's this whale skull. And uh, Robert was able to, to capture this. And, uh, and what you see, you know, just this, this blackness, the, the conditions at that particular time were extremely good for black water. Usually it's just completely wipe out. A lot of times it's, there's, there's zero visibility. And uh, you know, I pop up and with the help of a body bag that the police department uses, 
were able to cover a whale skull that was around 300 pounds. Um, and it was pretty amazing because this was the first time that we ever recorded anything in these conditions and brought up something so large. And uh, again, the risk for recovery, uh, it was just featured on National Geographic as a really cool find and uh, they shared this story so you can find this online. There's also these conditions where most people wouldn't even dare to go into a swamp to begin with, but wouldn't dare to go into a swamp or swamp rivers when they're flooding. And when I'm sitting there watching like Hurricane Sandy and actually dove Hurricane Sandy during the floods, I'm thinking, yes, this is a super exciting moment. This is the time to get down in these rivers because it's wiping out all this loose debris. And I can go down there and I can find things and I don't have all this silt. So these are examples of what it looks like in flooded conditions. And this condition, this was down in North Carolina. And there was this whale skeleton just everywhere. There's these bones everywhere. Like I could take my hand and just rub them along the ver or the the uh, rib cage of the whale. And this is actually an atlas to the to the whale. This is the the bone that the the skull rotates on. So just lay in there. I mean, literally. I mean, there's houses alongside this river, and they have no idea that there's a whale sitting there waiting to be discovered. And there's other situations where, in some cases, the river current is ripping so much, you get this extreme particulate. It's just ripping by you. Um, again, you have this stuff flying in your face. It's really hard to see. And in this, in this video, I have my camera. I have my, my, uh, my light. Everything is this close to the bottom. And I move it along, and I'm trying to hold myself and try to record this. And as you can see here, there's this really cool precursor to a megalodon shark. This is a, a shark tooth here that uh, is approximately about 20 million years old, just laying on the bottom of the river. It's amazing, right? All this stuff just laying there, just waiting to be found. You just have to push yourself to go into those situations. And then there's cases where, okay, so there's not so much particulate, but you have a lot of really sandy bottom and it's really hard to hold on to and you're moving yourself along. And again, you know, just out there waiting to be found is this amazing discovery like this megalodon too. It's just laying there. So would you put yourself in that position? Would you put yourself in that really, nasty situation to make that discovery, to, to see it, friends. I look at this video and I'm ready to hit the water again. It's just like a zen to me. So, uh, But if you pay attention to the tooth, you can see that particulate just flying by. So heavy, heavy currents, hard to hold on, but your heart is throbbing. You just got this amazing excitement. It's so exciting. And then, I'm sure you're familiar with these critters. <laughs> so, I don't put myself in the situations to dive with alligators. They just happen to be in the places that I dive. You know, this is their home. They always tell you, if you're a diver, if you're diving around alligators, always come up in the middle of the river system. Why is that? <coughs> Alligators like to hang out along the edge, right? So if you come up in the center, most likely you're not going to have an alligator staring at you in the face. Well, this happened to me on an occasion where I came up and there was this nine-foot alligator, approximately, staring at me in the face. So I'd probably come up, and it probably looked like this little turtle poke pocket, or poking out of the water. And what do you do in that situation? What are your options? So, other than going in my pants, you know, I can make myself look bigger than the gator. And that's what I did. I jacked air in my BCD, and I inflated myself, and I'm like, nee, you know, trying to make myself look big, and as I'm trying to backpedal and get out of there. This particular alligator was from a different situation, right? Went into a hole in South Carolina, and I took this picture when I came out. 
This is approximately a 10 foot alligator and it was not out on the water um, when, I, uh, when I went into a hole. So it was in the water when I was in the water. So when I came out, it was there. You can just imagine what was going through my head. So anyhow, I just continued to draw, dive. I went into other spots and not far from there, I found another amazing find. This was another publication that we did. This is a, a prehistoric whale skull. That was a huge piece in paleontological study. Not far from that skull was another. This one right now is currently under review for publication as a new genus of whale. How cool is that? Yeah. I'm like totally ready to get back in the water and find another. So I'll leave you with this. Everybody has something in life that they strive for. There's something that you're really wanting and thriving for. How far would you push yourself? What risk would you take to make that discovery in your life? Thank you.